live from the sewers, this is the Turtle Power Podcast. This is your audio source for all the news, reviews, and insight into the world of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Now join your hosts, Ryan, Alex, and Darby. Bossa Nova! Bossa Nova? Chevy Nova? Excellent! Yeah! Yeah! Now it's time for the Turtle Power Podcast. Oh, I, no, I'm oh, not going to oh. stop you. Keep going. Oh, Keep going. Oh, I, like oh, I didn't. I, I thought it was still. Oh, well, we're on, oh, whoops. Hey, look at that. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of the Turtle Power Podcast. Now, that is the enthusiasm I've been waiting yeah, for that from is... our host. <clears throat> Finally. Put a little extra oomph into it and, uh, and some, some extra liquid, I guess. I don't know. Some liquid courage, you mean? Yes, there we go. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, uh, that Irish side definitely showing through tonight. <laughs> oh, man. I was, uh, we've been watching uh, Conan. Conan's uh, 20th anniversary is, uh, been, they've been celebrating that this week and <laughs> showing him like in Ireland. And uh, uh, <laughs> it just seemed very familiar. <laughs> <laughs> just like yeah, I've been there, I've been there, I've been there. Yep, he's like a animal in his habitat. He, uh, so he was outside of O'Brien Castle, which I've been to because uh, that's where I proposed to my wife on the cliffs of Moher, and and that's sweet. I didn't know it was O'Brien Castle, but the funny part is, is that when he was there taping that uh, scene, it was like just total like. It was like gale force winds, you know, rain. Just it was just terrible, and, and I was like, "Yeah, that's that, yeah, that's Ireland that's, weather that's, there for you." <laughs> that's exactly what it looks like. Um, so uh, if you haven't noticed uh, yet, we are a man down tonight. Man uh, down, man down. <sighs> Very disappointed <laughs> Tur- today. Turtle down. But you know, there there was an episode where I I slept through I don't know eighty percent of it. So I guess I can forgive him for at least eighty percent of this episode. <laughs> Oh, Alex, we miss you, buddy. Um, uh, he's got some some tef- technical difficulties over there, and uh, <laughs> yeah, stop me if you've heard this one before. Internet provider not working. <laughs> yeah, we've all been there. So, uh, but uh, and anyway, I mean, we've unfortunately we've we've got uh, limited schedules now. We're all freaking busy as all hell. So. Yeah, especially me. I'm I'm busier. I'm the one that's not married, and I'm busier than both of you guys. Well, you're holding down uh, a job and school, and you got and hopefully a future internship coming up here. We'll we'll find out soon. Yeah. Uh, you want to tell people what your schooling is in right now? Uh, yeah, I've actually recently just started going to the uh, Colorado Media School. It's the Ohio Center for Broadcasting, beyondair.com. Uh, I've actually recently just started broadcasting school. Earlier this month, hoping to graduate sometime in October 2014, uh, met a lot of great people so far, interesting uh, teachers. The curriculum is really outstanding, and I, I actually um, you know, I don't, I don't want to put too much into this, but I've actually got to credit you, Ryan, a little bit for uh, kind of steering me in this direction, just because I've enjoyed doing the podcast so much. I've realized the only time I'm ever happy anymore is when I'm actually doing on-air radio broadcasting podcasting stuff so i figured this was definitely the the kick in the pants i needed to actually pursue something i'm genuinely interested in doing and happy to do i'm blushing over here no i appreciate that man i'm just happy that uh i mean when you told me uh i was i was i mean i was really happy for you that uh you know you're able to uh you know find something that you really love and you're really excited about doing so 
um, you know, d- dumb luck on my part. Let's put it that way. <laughs> yeah, it's like who do I know talks more than anybody on the planet to be on my podcast? <laughs> oh, that's right. Uh, well, duh. Uh, no, I'm, and also I'm thrilled because that means that uh, I'm gonna be handing off some of these duties onto you because right now I'm the the director, the producer, the editor, the <laughs> so uh, uh, you know I'll get ready because you're going to be getting a lot more than just a uh, host <laughs> on your on your resume. So. I feel like I should apologize in advance to our listeners for the future content that will be <laughs> for the future sounds and everything that will be coming out shortly. Oh no, I I look forward to it, and I know that our listeners are, will be as well. Um. So, uh, what, well, let's see what else is going on, man. Um, uh, I guess before we get into the show, uh, I just, I, I feel like I need to mention this right quick because, uh, well, there's a couple things. One, uh, as we're recording happy Disney star Wars day. Uh, ah, yes. May ago. the force be with you. Yeah. May, may the, may the ears be with you as well. Um, yeah. One year ago today, I, uh, I remember sitting in a, uh, in a conference room in Tampa, uh, scrolling through Twitter because I was incredibly bored uh, with what was being discussed, <laughs> and uh, it wasn't re- involving me anyway. So, uh, and just I remember just as soon as I saw that first first tweet about it, I just started flipping out. So, you know, as you know, I mean, you know, hell, you're the same way. Grew up with Disney, grew up with Star Wars. I mean, well, yeah. Yeah. It's an amazing time of the year. It's, it's really great that you know they continued that partnership for as long as they have. It was cool when I worked at Disney to meet some of the celebrities that they would bring in because they would actually stay at my hotel. Yeah. Who, who, so, did you, who did you get to see? I remember probably my favorite person I got to meet was Warwick Davis. Yeah. Oh, he's great. The, and, and the really funny thing was – and I, I remember – oh, man. I remember he he checked into our hotel and he was really great and the and, and I remember I'm gonna remember this probably for a really long time I was I was dating a girl at the time who actually recently just got married but she was working at the hotel with us and I said that's Warwick Davis and he's here for Star Wars the weekend and she was like well who's he what did he do in Star Wars and I literally just gave her the look of like are you serious <laughs> <laughs> what role could Warwick Davis have possibly played in the star wars movies uh, besides the oh my god i laughed i literally just gave her the like are you are you kidding me you, really? you're joking right really oh uh, look nice yeah oh. he was pretty cool he was really nice really down to earth pretty pretty relaxed about everything and uh you know put- putting around on his chair but he yeah. was he was a pretty cool guy he was Definitely one of my favorites there. His, uh, his one-man show that he, he's now putting – he just did that. Uh, I think this was the first year he did it at Star Wars Weekends was amazing. It was really good. I mean James Ronald Taylor, is, he's the only other one that's ever done one of these. And I mean his is great too, but you know his is all about voice acting, whereas Warwick's was more about um, – his acting is just, you know, obviously starting with, you know, Return of the Jedi and then going all through, you know, Potter and and uh, all of his stuff with Ricky Gervais and everything like that. So, right. Yeah. No, he's he's excellent. He's excellent. Um, that's really cool. That's a cool story. I don't, I don't even I guess I do remember now that you bring it up. But if you would have asked me, I, I, I wouldn't have remembered that. So um, well, screw you, too, buddy. <laughs> Oh man! And uh, uh, the second thing I want to mention, uh, because I feel like the these two universes uh, are certainly um, connected on on multiple levels, is the new X Men uh, trailer that just came out. Oh God! Doesn't that look amazing? Wow! It's if you guys haven't seen this, you know, yeah, pause the the show go to youtube watch this uh trailer it's certainly we'll wait yeah yeah and then come back obviously right now i'm waiting <laughs> it's fantastic um it's still the, waiting <laughs> it's brian singer they're bringing him back the original director from the original x-men movie which bring, is pointed out by the way in the trailer yes. when it's like director of x-men like not the crap that was x-men 3 x-men united like right. last yeah. last stand like yeah. no we're not the last the stand. Guns. Yeah. And they're 
from what it looks like, they're they're connecting the two the two stories. They're connecting the original well, trilogy. That's, that's been old news for a while. Yeah, yeah, but like, I didn't know how they were going to do it, but they. Like you can see in the trailer how they're gonna do it, and it looks outstanding. If I could just grab Jennifer Lawrence and just shake her and say, "Please stop doing the Hunger Games," because that's why this movie has been delayed for as long as it has, is because she does Hunger Games oh. instead. Nice. Like they had to wait for her to finish to do the second Hunger Games movie to do this one, and I'm just like, I just want to like grab her and shake her and be like, "Please put, you know, X Men First Class like ahead of that." Yeah. Well. The I guess they're probably working on the third one now, on the third Hunger Games. If not now, then pretty soon. So, because the second one's coming out this month, well, in such November a, anyway. Such a, uh, I'm not a fan. Anyway, regardless. <laughs> um, so yeah, yeah, uh, you know they they're they're both mutants. They're both uh, based on comic books. You know, it's uh, the, well, I mean hell, the the turtles' history with the. Uh, daredevil and and uh which is uh marvel so right yeah there you go yeah there you go um (sighs) okay so let's you know what let's say i guess let's get into the the thick of the show here and get into the news april o'neill channel three eyewitness news they got the news they got the news ow Uh, you're making Alex proud. Sorry. I, I tried <laughs> to live up to like one-tenth of what Alex could do with We Got the News. So, <laughs> Oh, well, he, he's here in spirit. Or, no, he's he's stuck wondering why his internet isn't working. Oh. It's like, I can't watch Netflix. I can't do anything. That would be pretty tough. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, we had a video game get released. Wait, what? Yeah, that other Ninja Turtles video game. Was a video game released? Yeah, that 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 other Ninja Turtles video game that was uh, getting made. Um, uh, this this. Okay, so we knew this was this was in production. We didn't know how close or how much development or had been. anything about it really or anything about it really um yeah so it's out <laughs> okay um, um when yeah. when did that happen uh this happened uh just uh, a week ago two weeks ago um it it actually came out ahead of its date that it was originally supposed to come out like just by a few days but uh, uh, sounds like, according to the reviews I'm reading here, it sounds like they should have kept it going until then. Yeah. Should have actually worked on the game to improve it well, before they actually released it early. Anytime a video game um, just kind of just comes out. And, and there's no announcement for it whatsoever. no marketing. There's no nothing. Uh, typically not a good sign. Especially with the marketing machine that has been the – the Ninja Turtles since they've come back on Nickelodeon. Right. Um, so this uh, was released on uh, the 22nd of October. Like, like they'll announce like, hey, we have Ninja Turtle notebooks for back to school stuff. But they haven't even released like, hey, by the way, there's this video game that we just kind of – Yeah. <laughs> It got nobody the, look over there. there we a, just there released a, a video game right. contractually. Yeah, <laughs> there was a release uh, trailer that essentially came out when the game came out, and uh, it's just there's not much to the trailer. <laughs> um, there's not much to the game. Yeah. Um, so first of all, uh, just to remind everyone, it's out on Nintendo Wii. Um, didn't know they were still making games for the Wii, but okay. Yeah, not the Wii U. God forbid they actually make a game for the current console that is existing for Nintendo right now. Um, It is out on Xbox 360, which, okay, 
just barely. It, they and they're still going to make 360 games for a while, um, even with well, Xbox because the one, one is yeah. And uh, I, I'm actually going to guess if it sells anywhere, it would probably be on the last one, which is the Nintendo 3DS. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm reading the reviews that you supplied with us here, and and I love this. Quote that says, even if this was an Xbox 360 launch game, it would have looked outdated. Yeah. And when uh, when did the 360 come out? 2005. And the game looks outdated for that. Yeah. That's... Like, yeah. I, it's seven years ago, and the game looks outdated then? <sighs> so... So this is out there. Uh, I, I, to be totally honest, I, I don't think I'm gonna get this. Oh, of course um, not. If anything, you'd game fly it or see yeah. if it's in your local red box. If it shows up in a red box, I will definitely try it. Um, right. But other than that, uh, maybe if it becomes like DLC on a uh, on Xbox or PlayStation or something like that. Yeah, but I don't think that's gonna happen. <laughs> Um, it, it's forty dollars. Um, you can get it on Amazon. Forty. Right now. Jesus Christ. Yeah, it's for, you can forty. Get, forty dollars. Yeah, it, for I think it, forty now, pesos sounds more like the value you're getting for, out of this game for a three to four hour game. Three to four hours. Um, <laughs> Out of the Shadows was that long, and it was fifteen. So. <sighs> Yeah, <laughs> it, it's like they don't even care. And I mean, I know we talked about this in our in our video game episode. Yeah. It, it's just like, why won't they just give the contract to somebody who genuinely cares about Ninja Turtle games? Yeah, it's they stopped caring after Turtles in Time. Seriously. So, so the, we've got a, a review here from Game Asylum. And uh, of course, with everything we discussed, we'll have a link in the show notes. Uh, there, this, this line here s- speaks to this perfectly. There's so little passion for the license on display that Activision may have well as asked the Cabela's Dangerous Huts studio to have handled it. Now, I don't know, I'm quite sure what the end of that means, but <laughs> it uh, just the fact that there's so little passion for the license, they just don't care. They just really don't care. It's like, why did they buy it? They thought they were just going to be able to make a lot of money regardless of how good the game was. That it, just because it's just Ninja Turtles on it or Nick uh-huh. Turtles on it. like uh-huh. I think you just hit it right there. I think that their idea was we'll buy the license from Viacom, Nickelodeon, and uh, they, 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 they got some price for it. Say like, I don't know. We'll just throw out a number. Say they bought it for uh, six bucks. <laughs> they bought. Let's say they bought the license for a million dollars. Okay, and uh, I'm I'm just totally making up numbers here. But then they said, you know what? We can make three games. Uh, we'll spend you know a hundred thousand on each game, and then hope we can make our. We think by just putting out uh, crappy games with. Uh, no, I don't want to say crappy games like Out of the Shells or Out of the Shadows is a crappy game. It's not. It's not that bad. But well, they, it that was have a, a game of... that was you know made cheaply just for the sole purpose of putting out a game, right. just for the experience of playing. That wasn't right. anything that it, it wasn't. You know, it's a DL. It, it's not a DLC, but you know, it's download. You download it yeah. from a network, which tells me it's not going to be the epic. You know, right. blockbuster video games that have been coming right. out recently. Exactly, it is smaller budget, smaller budget game. You know, and it's fifteen dollars. Right, and and they were their idea was just let's let's make some cheap stuff, put the Ninja Turtle name on it, and put it out there and hope people buy it based on the name, just so they can get their money back or make a profit on it. I'm pr- I I think you hit it right on the shell with that one because. It, that, well, basically because we have nothing else to, <laughs> that says that that's not true. Well, I definitely love this quote that says because um, what, what what is this game asylum? It's it's a it seems British with the pricing system they're putting in there. Yeah, but it's like even if this game was six point nine five pounds or eight hundred MSP if you prefer Microsoft points Microsoft if you points, prefer. Yeah. It's like ten Xbox Xbox Live Arcade game. 
it would have been a hard sell. So the fact that Activision are expecting parents, children, and longtime Turtle fans alike to spend 25 on it is a bit of a joke. Yeah, and 20, 25 pounds are $40. Yeah, it's a bit of a joke. It's, it's a big joke. I mean... Oh, it's huge. It's monumental. Yeah. It's like the guy even says, like, for uh, for eight bucks, like, we're, yeah. Americans aren't even going to want to buy it. Now, now, you go, you back up to when, our, uh, let's see... Uh, Turtles in Time reshelled came out, and everyone had a big problem with that. You remember because they're like it, it was, was Ubisoft, it was 15, and it was fifteen dollars, and everybody was upset. It was like, oh, it's too expensive and everything. I uh, bought it. Yeah, so did I. <laughs> uh, where is the backlash to the forty dollar game that's three hours long? It's you know where it's at. It doesn't exist because one, nobody knows this game has come out yet. Uh, because they never really announced it. And two, it's, I mean, Turtles in Time was more targeted towards, you know, people our age that grew up with the Turtles, that really loved the Turtles and really wanted to relive the nostalgia of playing Turtles in Time. Whereas this game is targeted towards little kids who are just discovering Turtles for the first time. If we waited how many years between Turtles in Time and Turtles in Time reshelled? Yeah. What, 15? Something like that. Something like Probably that. longer. Yeah. And this game just came out, and it's year two of the Nick Turtles, yeah. which if kids nowadays are just now getting into it, barely, they've only been with the Turtles for yeah. a year. Yeah. Yep. That's why there's no backlash to it. <sighs> yeah. Hell, I don't even know what else to say about this. It's it's sad. It's disappointing. Um it's incredibly sad. I mean, especially nowadays when when kids have access to all these amazing games on their iPads, let alone their console systems. Yeah. If you really want kids to get into your product, you can't just be doling out these half assed, you know, we don't care, passionless games. Yeah. You want them to be into your property. I mean, think about it. Uh, the, the first Ninja Turtle video game that we grew up with was one of the hardest games. And we'll tell you, like, it was horrible. It was a horrible game. But the funny thing is it was so hard. The first thing people will tell you was not that that game sucked. Was that, yeah. oh, my God, it was incredibly hard. Yeah. yeah. Followed by it sucked. And, and it's ingrained into everyone's psyche. Exactly. Exactly. Kill yourself after – if you make it to the damn level, if you make it out of there, like, just kill yourself. You're done. Just, it's over. <laughs> <laughs> it's over. But what did they do? They tried to improve on those games. The second game, which was kind of the sequel to the arcade game, was better. The third one, you know, Manhattan Project was better. It got better. Then it got the yeah. Turtles in Time, which was even better. And then they just stopped caring. Yeah. But in order to keep kids around for the for the you know video games, you had to make each game better. But these kids nowadays, they're new to the Turtles. They're only a year in, so like, who cares if the game sucks? I guess because they can just, you know, you have to have a good game for kids to get into it because there's so many, much more choices to play oh. nowadays oh, yeah. than we had. Totally true. <sighs> um, yeah, you see, that's the thing. I think that's going to come and bite them. Is that I, I really, I mean, I don't know for sure, but I feel like even young kids are not going to just fall into this as like, Oh, I like Ninja Turtles. I'm going to get this game. Like, of course not in today's day and age. Like everybody's going to talk to their friends. I'm, I, I'm sure there's like little, you know, like, you know, elementary school kids that are on Twitter talking to their friends. Like, if you heard about this Ninja Turtle game, Oh, I'm going to go on IGN and, and read about it. Oh, it's terrible. Never mind. Exactly. Nowadays, you know, back in the day, we didn't have IGM. We had to buy a game to find out how much it sucked. And by then, we already paid for <laughs> it. You, so, yeah. like, you might as well see it through to the end. Yep, yep. Uh, I guess I should mention uh, the 3DS and Wii versions are $30. Oh, oh man. Wow. So. Well, $30 in that case. Wow. <laughs> oh, well, never mind. Oh, well, it. totally. Never mind then. Sorry. <laughs> I, I take away every negative thing I had to say about this game. Ah, that, that extra 10 bucks. That's what threw you over the edge. That's what will get you. <laughs> <laughs> for the 3ds that's sort of understandable that's kind of how much 3ds games are and that's sort of the quality you expect from 3ds games uh true the the yes i will i will definitely agree with that not a wii game yeah maybe a wii not wii u like it's wii u now man stop making games for the wii it's wii u now yeah it's like when the playstation 4 comes out then being like 
oh, we're releasing this game only on the PS3. <sighs> yeah. I mean, I'll buy it because I have a PS3. But other than that, yeah. especially if you want to reach a new generation of consumers, yeah. the past console is not the way to go. Well, that's that's a whole other bag, um, can of worms there. Just I know they they both like to support their consoles for a certain amount of years. You know, after their their next gen is then don't released, release but... the next gen so <laughs> shortly after the other one. Yeah, really quickly, I will mention that uh, IGN uh, just released today a uh, their own ver- uh, their own review of <laughs> the Turtles game. It's entitled cold turtle soup <laughs> oh jesus christ got a score of five which is medium, yeah you're gonna medium. a five out of what a hundred five <laughs> five out of ten. Oh, that's funny so uh, still up there and i thought it would get yeah put that link in our show it notes or website well definitely well i guess let's move on from that <sighs> piece of work way to start off on a positive note there right <laughs> In the world of video game news, uh, there is not many good news to tell. Yeah. uh, Speaking of which, um, got a out of the shadows uh, PlayStation release update. And the update. You mean that they still haven't set a date yet? The update is there is no update. Exactly. (laughs) But I guess just reassurance that they are still working on it. The reassurance that they are trying to make this game better than the Xbox release, that they're trying to give their developers more time to make it a decent game worth the $15 that you're going to pay for it. Yeah. And, and to actually use the PlayStation 4 to its fullest abilities, I guess. Well, so Chris, I know the, the, the main – the head designer on this game, Chris, I think it's for Chad. I, I think that's his last name um, over at Redfly. He's – like you listen to him in interviews. He, he is a big Turtles fan. And, uh, I mean, you can see his love of the Turtles when playing the Xbox version of it. Um, unfortunately, uh, there's a lot of gamers out there who are PlayStation gamers and have yeah. yet to even see this game. So, uh, and I know all all three of us are, you know, waiting to purchase it on PlayStation. Uh, yeah, I know. We're like Fry saying, shut up and take my money. Like, just give us the game. Just take my money here. Just please, please let me do this. Oh, I love that episode. <laughs> shut up and take my money. That's what it is. And it's yeah. – it's God. And, and I agree with a lot of the people on here where they say, can't, can't you just give us a demo? Yeah, something. Yeah. Can't you let us what our beak – since it's a PG show, can't you let us like what our beak a little bit? Yeah. Just like so get a taste. Yeah. Make it, I, you know what? I'll play as Mikey. I don't care. <laughs> I'll play as Raph. I don't care. Uh, I'll wait for Donnie. I will wait for Donnie, but just give me like a little taste. Yeah. yeah. I don't care. It's uh, I mean, it's, now the 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 link that we've got is from October six, but. Up to even uh, a day or two ago, um, they've been responding to people writing on their on their wall on their Facebook page saying, "We promise we're still working on it." Like it's it's <sighs> it's just frustrating because we want it and it's not here. Want it uh, bad, yeah. Want so, it bad. It's still coming. Want it folks. to take advantage uh, of us. Because Just do horrible effect- things. You know what? It's affecting us too because we promised everybody that we would have some uh, some gameplay footage of all of us playing on there. I know. PlayStation, and um, we can't do it yet. So, um, and uh, I guess we should mention too. One of our listeners, uh, uh, Tony Reby, asked if a uh, TMNT game has been announced for the uh, PlayStation Four. Um, no, which, yeah, not that I know of, and not not for any of the. Uh, next gen consoles. I'll... I feel like we should we should point out to the guy that they're still making games for the Wii and not the Wii U. So PlayStation Four next gen really doesn't sound like that's what they want right now. Yeah, um, maybe that'll come with the next round of. Uh... Maybe that'll come with whoever buys the the licensing next, who actually gives a damn about the turtles and actually wants to make a really good game. Yeah. Now the one thing I'm not entirely sure about so when when activision got the license the license was for three games since then three games have come out but i'm not sure if rooftop run the ios game uh counts if that counts towards that i'm not what well, activision made that one I'd, i don't think they were involved i'm not 100 percent sure 
Um, because they've just been the publisher. They haven't been the developer on any of these. But I'm right. I'm not sure if they were involved at all with Rooftop Run. So there might still be one in the pipeline. Um, I kind of hope it's not. I kind of hope. Well, I mean, I kind of hope it is. I hope they did do Rooftop Run just so just we don't have to deal with Activision anymore. They clearly don't care about it. Yeah. They clearly just wanted a quick payday. So they put out games earlier before they were supposed to be released, with the exception of Out of the Shadows, which they're taking their sweet time with. Yeah. I mean, they clearly don't care. Give it to somebody who cares. Yeah. Please, just give it to somebody who cares. It's, it's, uh, it's disappointing. It's horribly disappointing. So it's 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 almost as bad as Michael Bay making the movie. Like. <laughs> <laughs> like Michael Bay is messing up so badly, we constantly have to have Kevin Eastman come out and tell us, "Hey, man, everything's okay. Everything's going to be all right." But and we still don't believe him. Like we that's how bad that is. We have not heard much from uh, from the movie side uh, lately. Well, there was that interview that was done fairly yes. recently. So um, let's let's go ahead and uh, move down to movie news. Like I said, not a whole lot. We did get a an interview from uh, the HollywoodNews dot com, and uh, it's with uh, our new quote unquote shredder, I guess. Sure, <laughs> even though that's not his name. Even uh, though he's not Oroko Saki, not Japanese, and whatever. He's not even Schrader. God. It's, it's, okay, so this is William Fitchner. Um, now, they – okay, so the, the the title is called Shredder Speaks. Fitchner talks to Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Um, but uh, it's not long into the uh, the article that they bring up Eric Sachs. So, so who is apparently uh, Shredder. Yeah. So he says uh, he also divulged that his version of Eric Sachs, a.k.a. the Shredder, is a departure from what we've seen before. No kidding. Uh, <laughs> no, duh. <laughs> no, booyakasha. Oh, I almost slipped on that one. <laughs> <laughs> With his portrayal being the darkest version of the character. So here's the quote. Now, yeah. No, here's, go ahead. Sorry. Here's the quote. What I read about Eric Sachs in the script was great. And then how the character has been molded and changed when we started filming has become something really quite remarkable in terms of what we've seen before of the character. Um, I okay, sure, I'll I'll certainly hand that to him. That um, they've yeah. changed the writing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, even beyond the name, beyond the ethnicity, beyond all of that. Uh, if if I'm sure all he's thinking about is the uh, the 87 series yes, and the, the and, so, the, and the 2013 series, uh, I I doubt he's even thinking of that one. He's probably just thinking 87 series. Yeah, and and I'm sure it's and maybe the movies, maybe the movies, but maybe uh, I'm not even sure about that. I honestly, because when he when they said darker than any version we've seen before, I was like, really. Is Eric Sachs going to be worse than the Utram Shredder? Right. Or the or the quote unquote real Shredder that showed up in season five yeah. of the O3 series? Like, hey, hey, more power to them if they do, if they pull it off and it's great. Hey, all right, but color me skeptical right now because your name is Eric Sachs. It's not even a Shredder. <laughs> And I, uh, and it says too that they they molded and changed him while they were filming. So like, is he going to be a completely different character halfway through the movie? You like, wait, 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 wait. That's not the same guy that that did. Wait, what? Okay, so here, what I was going to say was if if they're if he's comparing this shredder to be uh, much darker than what we've seen before. Yeah, if you're comparing it to eighty seven shredder, it's not going to take darker much. Than that. Is not going to take much. <laughs> no, no, it's going to take like, like saying the word "damn," and all of a sudden he'll be darker <laughs> than the '87 Shredder, which you know Raphael has made a career out of well, doing. Yeah, thank you. Um, 
Oh, no, no. I wasn't going to let you and, point and that the out. And the reason I think that is what he's comparing it to is because how close this movie is going to be related to that 87 series. How right. close? I mean, hell, the, the, the main male lead in the, in the movie is Vernon. 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 Yeah. Which I called, which I'm just going to keep pointing out that I called that. Yeah. And, uh, over and over again. Own it. Everyone thought he was going to be Shredder. And I'm like, nah, dude, he's going to be Vernon. I'm like, watch. <laughs> what else to say about this? Not a whole lot. Um, it didn't really let any cats out of the bag or anything like that with this interview. But um... yeah, apparently the film is set for release on August 8th now. I mean, they did they ever really set that date until I read this? Well, it moved oh. around. It, it, the, the exactly. Date, yeah, the date has moved around a little bit. So, um, I think that was the last one that I heard. So, but I, what, I what, what I kind of like too is it said Fitchner was overflowing with enthusiasm about the project as he has a knack for picking out good projects. Really? <laughs> really? <laughs> Fitchner has a knack for picking out. I mean, no, no, no. Don't get. I've seen him in some great movies, some great projects. But there's a reason why. And even in this in this article, they refer to him as the ultimate that guy. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, really? He picks out such great projects that apparently people still call him that guy. For me, for the longest time, that was William H. Macy until I learned his name, but still. Yeah. Oh. Like, nice. ultimate that guy. Yeah. I mean. What, eh. about, what about Clint Howard? He's another one of those that guys. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Like, Philip Seymour Hoffman stopped being that guy for me after he did Capote. Sure. Sure. And it's just like, if you're still going to call somebody that guy, then apparently he's not making the greatest choices you think he's making. Sure. Uh, he's also quoted in this interview saying, they are some messed up mutant turtles. And that's all Michael Bay's fault. <laughs> um, he, I guess he believes that we are going to be blown away with how they look. As long as their shelves are bulletproof, whatever, man. Yeah. Just hold we'll Mikey see. up and use him as a shield. We'll see if they. Boy, I, I'm worried for you because if they don't have that scene, you're just gonna walk out of the theater. <laughs> Probably, yeah. After I've sat through the entire movie waiting for that scene to happen. Okay, they're kind of celebrating the death of Shredder right now. I don't think they're gonna get shot up anytime soon. So <laughs> like, I'm that's, out. Now would be the time I walk out. <laughs> Uh, Screw this Booyaka show, man. I want my money back. I will only see it three more times today. There you go. Exactly. Uh, comic book, man. Um, oh, good segue there, buddy. There we go. Man. <laughs> oh, gosh. I, I, don't, I don't even try anymore. This just happened. No, you really don't. You're just like, so anyway, I at least gave you a segue for the uh, movie news, and then you just uh, you just don't even try anymore. I strike two on my way down. Donatello takes out a third with his staff. Already the pudgy ones are starting to panic. Raph loves this stuff. He's not alone. Why is he narrating? Is he crazy? Hardcore crazy. I love these guys! No, I know that's. <laughs> I, I know that's from. Oh, Girl that's Power. my first sound of the. That was by far probably actually one of my favorite moments of that entire movie. Oh. Was that? That was so great. Just, huh? Turtle Prime. Yeah, Turtle Prime. just Raph going. I love these guys. <laughs> oh man. Raph was all about until they started kicking his butt. <laughs> no, he loved that too. He uh, loved that part too. <laughs> it's a crazy, super crazy. I yeah. So anyway, comic book. Sorry, I was just caught off guard by that. <laughs> no, that's that's uh, that's 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 great. I, you know, because I tried to get little intros for all the different segments. You know, the video game stuff, the comic right. book stuff, collecting. Um, and you're making my future sound editing job a lot harder with these awesome intros. Hey, I'm already doing the work for you. Thank you for that. <laughs> but uh. Uh, trying to find a audio clip from comic for comics is <laughs> difficult understandable so that was the only thing i could think of was to uh bring in uh turtles prime that was a good one yeah uh so comic books uh just released let's just, today. Let's just stroke our egos some more for our fans shall we about how awesome our <laughs> yeah. anyway uh, yeah. comic books 
comic books. <laughs> uh, released today as we're recording, uh, we've got IDW Turtles number 27. I've read it. I'm up to date. I'm not slacking like in the last episode. <laughs> you don't. Uh, you don't. You don't have that read it. to uh, to brag to though. Unfortunately, purchased it. Purchased it off the store. Why? Because you guys don't keep up. I'm catching up still, man. Yeah. What are you okay, on issue here, twelve? Here's my new goal. Here's no. Here's my new goal. Okay, ready. Your new goal is to suck. <laughs> That's what you're doing. Apparently, here's my new goal. Uh, by the time that uh, nope. City Fall is is complete done you mean the last issue coming out next month yes by the time city fall is complete uh now okay so by the so probably the next ish, uh episode that we have is probably be the last when the last uh issue comes out so we'll give our readers uh, a little bit of time so either that episode or the the following one i want to do a a turtle or an idw comics show here's the funny thing i can do that right now i know (laughs) i know you can but i want to wait until city falls done you know what i mean that's fine it's fine city's fall no whatever you 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 just want to wait because you're lying behind so badly yes um, that's true that's true too it's my scapegoat though (laughs) (laughs) so when when city fall because i am loving the series and um I, uh, we, we had one of our, uh, one of our listeners, uh, reach out to us. Um, uh, I want to say it was, uh, Lewis from Montreal, uh, that you sure, uh, I'm pretty sure. So we well, keep up with I'm, our fans, man. If I'm like... wrong, I'm really sorry to who I, uh, uh, to, I'm un uh, accurately crediting this information to, but, um, uh, they did say that uh, they might be able to get uh, some of the uh, some of the writers, some of the artists from the IDW series, onto the show. So that would be sweet. That would be sweet. So um, you know, think about that too over the next couple months of uh, what uh, you know, what questions you want to ask and stuff like that too. So hell, maybe we can get Kevin Eastman on here. I don't know. That would. I mean. <laughs> It's Peter still Lair, man. Get, Peter Lair. Kevin and Gotta Peter get the on guy on. Gotta get the Donnie guy on. Yeah. No, I'd love to get I Peter on. I swear yeah. all Kevin Eastman is going to do until the movie comes out is reassure us that the movie is not going to suck as much as oh, we think. Oh, come it. on. He's not that much into, like, that. Like, he's 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 still in the comic books realm. That he just He's kind of just doing random promotion for the movie. If I could just – if I could just – Say right now, Kevin Eastman, you're doing a great job with City Fall. As the only member of the podcast who has actually read so far all of City Fall, <laughs> I say you are doing an outstanding job. My colleagues, I know, would love to concur with me, but they're slacking. <laughs> slacking. Yeah, I know. I'm getting there. What about okay? What uh, in addition with oh, issue 27? What about we also it? had? Micro series, villain micro series number seven, with Bebop and Rocksteady. Yes. Now, by the way, can can I just mention the the what what are they called the the hater blockers that that Bebop is wearing? By the way, the hater blocking shades that yeah. Bebop wears now. Yeah. Yeah. The uh, <laughs> well, they're like they're like uh, for uh, those out there listening. I, I guess it's kind of like what Kanye was wearing there for a while. The, uh, yeah, the hater blockers isn't that what they called them? I sure it's the 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 glasses that have like the horizontal lines like across the shades, and you wonder how you can see through them. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it works for Bebop. Sure, I mean it's it's kind of you know if you watch the '87 series, Bebop and Rocksteady kind of are a staple on how dated they are in their fashion and what they wear for their time frame. So you know, hater shades yeah. that's pretty dated material to be wearing. So it suits Bebop pretty well. Now, this is the first uh, incarnation of Bebop and Rocksteady in a long time. Well, think no, about it. it's not. We haven't seen Bebop or Rocksteady in any of the movies in, uh, in the 2003 series. We saw them in Turtles Forever, but that was a one-off because it was going back to the 87 series. 
Right. Um, but why would I, the only person who read all the comics on this show, tell you that the micro series comic is not the first time we've seen them in a while? So you're saying they're, they're in the IDW series? Oh yeah, no, I, no, I get that because well, the <laughs> micro series is part of. Is part of the IDW series. That's what I'm saying. I'm yeah, saying but that, they showed up. I'm spoiler yes, alert. Yeah. They showed up before their oh, micro I, series. I I assume so. I assume so. I mean, <laughs> with all all of these micro series that come out, uh, rarely does the character that it's about debut in that. They're usually like in a. Uh, a scene Hunt did it. Or, which one? Who? Didn't Hun debut in like his own micro series before he showed up in City Fall? You know, Spoiler: uh, Hun just showed up in the newest ish- well, <laughs> issue that came out today. <laughs> yeah, they, he, well, they they've already announced that. That was back at the um, back at uh, Comic Con, right? But didn't he already have his micro series already? Is what I'm saying. Um, was he in number six or is he in a future one? Gosh, see, I, I feel like he was in number track. six. Uh, uh, anyway. So, yeah, no, Hun's in the new issue, by the way. Uh, pretty interesting twist. Yeah, no, he's in there because, yeah, he's in, uh, he's in, uh, yeah, the, in issue 27, right? Yeah, he's in the new issue that just came out today. Yeah. But, um, kind of an interesting twist that they gave him. Mm. Don't know if I like it. I mean, they've done a lot of different things recently, like with the whole reincarnation, spoiler alert, reincarnation, oh. but I love that. Yeah. I loved when they went to Dimension X and, you know, I love the new twist they put on the neutrinos. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Did my whole character spotlight about the neutrinos based on the new ones. Yeah. But the new Hun, I mean, first of all, he's clearly not as big as the Hun we all know and love. Right. But. Well, the 2003 uh, Hun is... He has a connection with a certain character that I don't know if I like or not, Hmm. that I'm not 100% on board with. He's still part of the Purple Dragons. Yes, he's still part of the Purple Dragons, but he – and he's still kind of the leader of the Purple Dragons. And like in the 2003 series, he's very willing to just follow Shredder, even though Shredder and the Foot Clan are not the Purple Dragons. Mm -hmm. But there's a – twist to him that they kind of they, they kind of just let out of nowhere too like oh by the way blah blah blah, blah. and you're like wait what i actually had to read like that that part mm-hmm. like probably four times before i fully understood like so that's where they're gonna go with this okay mm-hmm. i mean it could lead up to some interesting dialogue and story we'll see okay. as of right now i'm not the biggest fan but like i said IDW hasn't steered me wrong yet. yet. Right. So uh, I'm and putting my I, faith in him. Yeah. I would totally agree with that. Totally agree. So, I mean, when you read the part I'm talking about, you'll fully – like when you read that, you'll you'll do the same thing. I guarantee you, Ryan. You'll read the same line like four times and go, oh, that's what Darby was talking about on the show because <laughs> I really don't want to do a spoiler alert on that because it's a pretty big one. Fair enough. Fair enough. It's kind of like – in the last episode when I said, well, we were going to be introduced to some characters we're very familiar with, and then it turned out to be Bebop and Rocksteady. <laughs> like, hey, yeah. hey, you've had a month to catch up. Shut up. No, I, <laughs> I, hey, uh, no, you're, you're, in the, you're in the green with me. So, um, but that's what I'm saying. Like, so this is a thing where probably in the next episode, after the next issue comes out, I'll probably talk about. But as of right now, I'm not going to spoil it. I'll let the readers decide because it just came out today. So you have a whole month to catch up to it. Sounds good. So, so it's a pretty we'll, big twist. We'll plan on pretty. It's pretty good. Pretty epic. So we'll I don't plan, know if I like it yet. <laughs> so we'll plan on either the next episode or the episode after that to be our big IDW um, review Turtles episode. It will, sure. We'll just spend the whole episode talking about the whole series up to that point. Um, talk about some of our. Uh, some of our favorite parts, some of our questions. Uh, hopefully, we'll get uh, some of the uh, some of the talent behind this great series. That'd be pretty on sweet. The show. Um. So let's move out of comic book news and into collecting news. <laughs> 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 wow, old school. Yeah, very old school. Um, Jesus. 
Yeah, old uh, Playmates commercial uh, clip there. It's the end of uh, the commercials. They always had the same ending. That little... From uh... Playmates! <laughs> um, so, uh, uh, listeners, if, if you recall, um, we had a little discussion about the uh, power sound effects figures. <laughs> <laughs> and why I didn't like them. Right. And it was the... Uh, yeah, go ahead and remind... Mind, remind everybody what what the... yeah, to me this is great i thought it was hilarious if you really want to annoy people especially like your significant other i mean i don't have one but i know i would annoy her if i had one with this is uh with these with these power power sound sound effects figures you know you lift their arm up and they say like you know turtle power or you know look out or something like that but that's just if you lift the arm up if you lift the arm up and hold it turtle power becomes Turtle power, you get the idea, and then you drop at the arm, and it's like power. <laughs> so, uh, and I hadn't seen this yet. Uh, so I went to my local neighborhood Target, found a Michelangelo power sound effects figure, and uh, took a little video. Decided to give it a try. So that's you laughed twice at that. That was great. <laughs> <laughs> that's the Michelangelo. Uh, he says, "Look, uh, and then, look out! Yeah, yeah, look out! <laughs> look out!" Becomes that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That was easily. And the funny thing was, I think it took me two seconds to realize that those toys did that. And I was just like, "Are you kidding me with this right now?" Also, I don't know if you noticed. Is it just me, or does the Michelangelo saying "Look out"? Not sound at all like Greg Sipes. No, it doesn't at all. No, not at all. We have this video up online uh, if you want to see it in action. Um, uh, we've got a link in the show notes. Uh, but you can also find it on our new YouTube page. Uh, this is the one and only <laughs> video we have on there. As of Yeah, right uh, apparently somebody was supposed to put it up videos and content on our youtube channel and because he's so, not here to defend himself in this episode <laughs> i'm just gonna bash that spanish bastard as much as i possibly can oh, you wouldn't like that he's cuban not spanish hispanic spanish <laughs> no, you know okay. what you know what leo sucks leo sucks leo sucks <laughs> leo sucks oh my god my god does leo suck That's terrible. so so much <laughs> Flames, flame, flames on the side of my face. <laughs> heaving, heaving, heaving breaths. Leo sucks. <laughs> He's not here to defend his boy. I don't want to hear it. You've been holding this in for a while, haven't you? <laughs> Just a wee bit. <laughs> All right. So... came out because somebody <laughs> was supposed to put content well, on but... our YouTube channel. And he hasn't done it yet. <laughs> okay, so um, so all we have is a video <laughs> of Michelangelo, not even voiced by Greg Sipes, going, "Look out!" <laughs> oh, pretty much. That's where we're at right now. <laughs> but. We will have more in the future. <laughs> I just totally threw you off your game, didn't yeah, I? Yeah, a little bit. Um, <laughs> we are – okay, so, I mean, that kind of falls on, on – on... on Alex? Yeah. No, because – okay, no, because uh, the video stuff is going to be all of us. The video – we're all going to do video stuff um, because our page is not – we're not going to be reposting 2003 episodes or anything like that. Um, or putting up Turtles Forever online for the 400th time. Uh, you can find all that stuff on YouTube already. Uh, we're going to put... Uh, TMNT Uploader, by the way. I, yeah, I feel like I should go. give a shout-out to TMNT Uploader because that guy has everything. Yeah, right. See, like that, that job's already been taken care of. So we're going to be focusing on 
you know, original content stuff, stuff that we talk about on the show like this. Um, and we're also going to be putting up the actual episodes, um, the, our episodes. So it'll just be another place that are available. You know, if you're trying to show a friend, um, about the show, uh, and you, you don't want to go through the whole rigmarole of really don't want them to be your friend anymore and you want to introduce (laughs) them to our show no like if you want uh if you want to play them a clip of the show or something you don't want to go through the whole downloading the episode again if you've already listened to it and yada yada yada. so it's a lot easier just pull up youtube and uh go to uh you can just look for turtle power podcast all one word uh that's our username on there and uh we'll be like i said having all the episodes up there we'll have uh some videos, uh, and hopefully in the future, um, hopefully in the near future, we're going to be doing some of our shows uh, in a video format too. So, so you'll get to see us wearing our spiffy headbands. <laughs> Absolutely, and me with my awesome pajama pants that never seem to stay on on Twitter. Oh no! No, nope. <laughs> maybe we shouldn't have that. <laughs> hey, baby, if 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 we do TMNT after dark. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> GMT after dark. Yeah. Oh, goodness gracious. What? Sorry? Yep. Got I lost in my pantsless fantasy for a second there. Oh, man. <laughs> so, we've got... Uh... Probably the most news uh, for this episode is coming out of the uh, the Nick Turtle. Uh, By the way, I feel like the team can be pointed out that Casey Jones has finally made an appearance in the show. Yeah, no, it's it's uh, it's great. It's great that he's finally in the show. And it was very it was very subtle. It was very. I actually had to rewind it to make sure I actually saw what I thought I saw. Yeah, but. In season two, it's not in season one. I mean, not season one. In episode two, not yeah. episode one. Episode, episode two, two, right? Towards the end of the theme song, when they're all looking around before they jump up on the building, Casey Jones just lifts his head up, and you're like, "There was a dude standing there the whole time with his hockey mask on." Well, yeah. Now they they did. Uh, I guess yeah. That's, that's a good point. Bring up um, the intro video has changed a little bit. Yes, they got rid of the intro for the characters because by now you know who the turtles are. <laughs> well, no, the, the 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 whole song is there still, but the, in the um the the no, that I've changed, seen, but the they just kind of they tweaked the video a little bit. They 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 put some, I don't know. Maybe we can get a copy of that. Maybe we'll put that up on online. I don't know if anybody's got that up online yet, but. What about Casey Jones looking up towards right. the end of the uh, yeah? Because exactly. that was pretty yeah. sweet to me. There you go. So I'll put a note to do that. We'll we'll get a we'll get a video of that up on the uh up on the uh the Twitter the uh the YouTube. The twi- God, Jesus Christ. I know. <laughs> oh, I'm terrible. It's only so much I can deal with and and you know, bad enough that that the guy who likes the turtle that sucks the most can't even be on this episode today. Doesn't even put up YouTube con- content uh, because he made the channel. We're, hey, we're not eighty. Uh, we're not eighty percent through the uh, episode yet, so you still got to give him a, a pass so far. Because Leo he, sucks. <laughs> <laughs> um. So season two, uh, it's out, and we've got uh, so far as of, as this recording, we've got two episodes. Uh, the third one's actually going to be showing up in like. Three days, right? right? Yeah, um, on November second. Um, so the first two episodes, the mutant situation, or excuse me, the mutation situation. Uh, second episode, the invasion of the Squirrelinoids, aka uh, Turtle Alien, uh, <laughs> aka Let's create more creatures so we can have more toys to sell. Well, true. Um, and uh, the next episode that's going to be debuting uh, probably by the time this. Hey, uh, gets up online. Uh, it's going to be follow the leader. So, and uh, do we know anything about that episode yet? Uh, I don't know. No, um, you just know what it's called. Yeah, just the name. Um, season two, though, um, the mutation situation. That episode actually premiered early on Xbox Live. 
Yeah, it did. Um, on the Nick app, you could actually watch um, the the episode a couple days early. Um, interesting. Uh, you know, the, the whole marketing thing, it really makes me scratch my head sometimes. Sometimes they, they do some interesting things like this. This was, this was a good idea. This was a, a really good idea. But uh, making a video game for the Wii and not the Wii U, <laughs> not so much a good idea. Um, yeah. Yeah. Or just the whole lack of marketing completely for that, for that game. So, um, but uh, so, yeah, Nick Turtle season two is out and uh, enjoying it so far. Um, you know, they're you can tell with the first episode that they're they're setting up. Uh, they're setting up something. This Yeah, this whole season is oh, going to be hey. just loaded with mutants. You know, we, we got to see butt cannons right away. Hell yeah, butt cannons. Butt cannons? It has butt cannons? <laughs> By the way, did you happen to notice the sound they made when those butt cannons fired? Oh, I noticed. Oh, I that noticed. was uh, was quite a flatulent situation that they found themselves in when those <laughs> butt cannons were firing. Yeah, um, you know, it's it doesn't bother me, but it, it takes you out of the moment, I guess, a little bit. And remind you that it's a kid's show? Yeah, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> I, I guess, you know, I guess I have mixed feelings about it. I don't dislike it. I know it's a kid's show and, and that stuff's going to happen. Um but uh, it just, like I said, it just kind of takes you out of the moment a little bit. But, um, so yeah, the crank point. did kind of go from like a serious, viable, legitimate threat, especially with the the new bio droids that they're using, to a joke when they started doing the butt cannons. Yeah, right. Um, interesting though that the the mu- the mu- uh, I guess the mutagen drop was. Accidental because of the turtles. Yeah, <laughs> the turtles' uh, fault. <laughs> uh, I, I guess I didn't see that coming. So I don't think it really would have changed anything, though. It just made April pissed off, right? Um, because otherwise, the Krang would have delivered the mutagen to Shredder, and then Shredder would have made his own army, and then right, yeah. But the whether it was the Krang dropping it. Uh, which is what I think. Well, I this is what I assumed anyway. Right. It was the crane who did that. They did that. They, like they were going to do that on purpose. Um, but it turns out it was the turtles who accidentally did it. And so, but either way, the turtles would be out there trying to clean it up no matter what. Right. So it didn't really change uh, that aspect of it. But except it made April very mad at the turtles. Right. Because uh, her dad yeah. ended up being mutated into wing nuts. By the way. Yeah. Did not uh, see that one coming. I mean, I so, kind of knew he was going to turn into a bat when he got doused because there was bats everywhere. Yeah. But then I was like, oh, I guess he's going to be turned into a bat. Oh, he's going to be wing nut. So does that – now it's a different version of it obviously, but, I mean, yeah, it's <laughs> – Do I think uh, a screw loose is going to show up? Well, that was, ne- that was my next question. I don't know, man. Like, Don't you have to? Not so much. Not in this series. You, it, that's like having a Bebop and not a Rocksteady. That's like well, having a Toka and not a Razor. Yeah, but, but you, I mean, you, this you series has kind of gone that way. You know, it's that's true. You know, they they keep <laughs> going in all place. these different directions, which we love, by the way. Yes. But like Wingnut, who would Wingnut? Who would be Screw Loose then? Like they never got into his. They never got into Professor O'Neill's character, yeah. other than he was April's dad. He was kidnapped by the Krang, and he was a psychologist. Yeah. Of all traits or, you know, organizations or job titles to have. He was a psychologist. Don't know how that would help the crying, but still. It's uh but you can tell though that this season is just gonna be them going around the city finding um the canisters of mutagen. Are they, they calling it mutagen give, or are they call it? They'll definitely it give Casey something to fight. Yeah, eventually Casey comes in to the situation. We we know we've seen the whole thing with Mutagen Man. Um, and those... Who has shown up actually a little bit in the background more 
in this yeah. ser- in the series so far in this yep. season. Yep. And um, so obviously something's going to happen there. I do like that though that they're kind of making it a bit more serialized, where stuff happens and it matters. You know. Yeah. Like oh, by the way, there's still this guy in a tank in Donatello's lab. Right. And they remind you like oh yeah, don't worry, we haven't forgotten. And like right. it's gonna and it's you know he didn't just disappear, which has happened in the past. So of course, um, I think uh, that was one of our initial um, uh, kind of issues with the series. Um, but uh, they, you know, over time they have definitely addressed that. So right. Um, I like, I like it. I mean, I'm, I mean, it's definitely giving. I mean, you, obviously, you were going to have the the crane defeated after season one, right? Uh, uh, you know, it gives the gives the turtle something to do. Like you're trying to figure out what they're going to do next. Well, clearly, it's going to be chasing down all these canisters. That'll yeah. be like their season long thing, just dealing with a bunch of mutants that keep sprouting up because of their mistake. Constantly being reminded of their failure and what they did and constantly having to try to overcome it. Do you think we're going to see the uh, Technodrome again? I think so. I mean, the Turtles are going to be really, uh, you know, they're going to be too distracted by all these uh, mutants running around. So probably get the crank time to actually do that. I mean, they it still works. One, it shows that it clearly still works. Yeah. Two, we've seen the Technodrome operate in worse areas than at the bottom of the ocean. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think it'll still work. It's still, I mean, they said the Krang, they had the Krang on the hologram, you know, talking to Shredder. So apparently a part of it still works. Yeah. So as long as that thing is still working, it can still be a threat. Yeah. So there, we're still going to, we'll see it again. Maybe not flying, but we'll see it again. There you go. Uh, speaking of the uh, Nick Turtles in season two, um, out at the New York Comic Con, um, which was, uh, I guess it was about a month ago now, um, they had uh, Nick Turtles panel. Um, it wasn't a whole lot that happened out there. Um, they had uh, Ciro and they had, uh, you know, Rob was out there and, and uh, I think Greg uh, Sipes was out there. I can't remember who else was. I think the moderator of the panel was like the producer. Um, huh. But uh, and he didn't bash the O three series at all. No, he didn't. <laughs> Thank goodness. Good to know. Um, but uh, if, I mean, a, a big chunk of the hour long, <laughs> the hour long uh, 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 presentation, Panel. yeah, was them showing episode one <laughs> of season two. So. <laughs> Yeah, the mutation situation. They didn't have much to talk about then, did they? Yeah, you know, they they showed a couple of things, a couple of new concept art things that we hadn't seen before. Uh, we tweeted out a picture of one of them, uh, probably the, I guess the one to me that was um, at least the most interesting. Uh, pizza face? Pizza face. Uh, yeah, what's up with that? Now, pizza face, if you recall – now, you know what? That's something else I should do is I should tweet out a picture of the original pizza face. Yes. Uh, Pizza Face uh, original and Pizza Face Nick Turtles, totally different. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so now you look at this Pizza Face. Now I put this out on Twitter and I said, uh, uh, what are your thoughts? Uh, let us know. We got a couple of responses. Uh, uh, the most popular one being Pizza the Hut. Okay, so there we go. So uh, Jake Harms, at Jake Harms, he said, makes me think of Spaceballs. It's Pizza yeah. the Hut. No, that's the first thing I thought of right away, too. Um, he did say that it'll make a cool action figure. I, I agree. Um, yes. Rochelle Norlin, uh, she replied with, ew, <laughs> which <laughs> yeah. I can also see. <laughs> yeah. That might be the effect they're going for. <laughs> yeah. And uh, – and we also got a response back from at JPM blues fan 21, who says, interesting. Looks like this season will introduce a bunch of new mutants. Uh, plus Casey Jones, hashtag hell. Yes. Oh, excuse me. Hell's yes. There it is. I was going to say, <laughs> quoted him wrong. We got the uh, pluralized the 
Whereas the original pizza face, for those of you who don't remember, was a really messed up looking chef with a giant hatchet and this abnormal growth on his head underneath his chef's hat. <laughs> yeah. So he, yeah, he looked like a normal, like, like he was like a fat Italian guy. I wouldn't say normal. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, and his, his right leg was a pizza cutter. <laughs> Um, and the, the action figure actually has the pizza cutter, uh, slicing through like a, a pizza box. So, right. Ugh. Um, so definitely a total, totally different look though, um, for, for the character. Um, I mean, he definitely, I think like, like you said, it's going to be a great action figure. That's need, probably why need, they made it the way that they did. Do we need to describe what, what, uh, pizza the hut? look like he looks like Jabba the Hutt but a giant slice of pizza <laughs> but that's in, melted. instead just yeah <laughs> and if just, we need to explain what Jabba the Hutt looks like you are just listening to the wrong podcast <laughs> touche touche um so yeah look forward to pizza the Hutt um <laughs> hey we just got an episode all about uh alien and so now we're gonna have an episode all about um Star Wars, Java, Spaceballs, so. Spaceballs, that works. Or Spaceballs, uh, it might be. Hey, Shredder can I'm be all about. If they want to do a Star Wars themed episode, sign me up. Uh, if they want to do a Spaceballs episode, sign me up. <laughs> yeah, totally. No, uh, it's only Shredder. Either way, you know, Shredder can be Lord Dark Helmet. There you go. <laughs> Get Rick Moranis. <laughs> Hopefully, yeah. Kevin Michael Richardson. Who's that? Oh, yeah. Man. Get Rick Moranis in on this. Hashtag I miss Rick Moranis. Uh, um, so next thing I want to talk about is uh, the DVDs. Yeah, the, why don't they exist? The well, okay, so well, not not the DVDs that don't the Blu-rays. Why don't the, the Blu-rays, Blu-rays exist? Okay. Um, I don't know. Um, I can guess. Uh, what do what do you think? Uh, why are there no Blu-rays but DVDs? Yeah. And what? No season. Yeah. We That's another thing to note. Uh, there's no full season of... Maybe the, they haven't edited it Nick yet. N- well... Edited it yet. They've got, <laughs> they've got all the episodes out from season one. So why do I think there's just a lack of, like, the first season's release, but we don't have... DVD seasons. Okay, so two things. One, we don't have a full season release, uh, like in a box set or anything like that. It's like right. season one is split into. Well, that's easy. Money. Yeah. Because they so know they... people, especially like you, Ryan, who bought every single 1987 DVD yeah. Ninja Turtles. They know there's going to be people out there that. Well, why would I put season one on DVD? For twenty five or twenty to twenty five dollars, when I could put half of it on one DVD for fifteen and the other half on it for fifteen, and make more money. Yeah, yeah. That's that's. I mean, like you said, we already have all of season one. Why didn't they just do a box set? Because you know what they're going to do. The box set comes out when the second half comes out, and then instead of charging you thirty dollars for the season, they'll charge you forty because it's a box set. Well. They've got – okay, so every single episode from season one is on disc. It's it's available. But I think it's split up into three ha- – or three – I was about to say three halves. Wow. <laughs> engineer. Yeah. Aerospace engineer, everybody. Hey, I stopped myself. I stopped myself. Um, <laughs> thirds. Um, yeah. Uh, okay, so that one I'm not as – P.O.'d about or anything because, like, as you said, uh, I would buy them anyway. But the bigger issue with me, no Blu-ray. This show is in high def. When I watch it at home, I watch it on Nickelodeon HD. Right. Um, and now I c- the only way I can buy them in high def is digital. I can't buy that. Uh, you know, Maybe that's them taking another shot at the PlayStation 3 since they don't want to release a game for it. 
why would they put it out on Blu-ray? <laughs> well, I, I actually I don't have a response to that. <laughs> um, I don't know. I mean, I'm still – maybe it's a, a thing where it's just <sighs> where they're going – uh, they they feel like digital might be the the future and and that that people really? that really? want DVDs not Blu-rays. Well, no, not no, Blu-rays that came out much later than DVDs are the future. <laughs> no, 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 I'm saying about digital. I'm saying they think that for a let's say people that are buying like adults that who are buying it for themselves, not for their kids, right? And if they you. want to watch. You know the high def version, then they're gonna have to watch it digital. Like I mean, Amazon's got it. You can download each episode. Um, uh, iTunes has maybe it. that's it too. Maybe it's because in order to allow Amazon to sell the digital ones, they had to agree not to sell the digital versions in stores. Yeah. So Amazon could make more money being the – not – I'm saying exclusive because I know they're not the exclusive ones. But making it online exclusive for HD, those websites can make more money. But the agreement might have been, hey, in order for us to sell it, you can't sell Blu-rays of it because then nobody's going to buy it from us. Yeah. See what I mean? Yeah. Just yeah. a thought. Um, you know, and that way you do get them faster You know, if you get them digitally. Uh, instead of having to wait for the whole season, you can wait. You can, or you you can just get it. You know, pretty much the next day. Um, yep. The only problem for me is uh, it's um, HD is three dollars an episode. Um, that'd be a nice sixty seventy five dollars season. So one. <laughs> so and and it breaks up season one. Uh, into two volumes, volume one, volume two. So volume one has 12 episodes. Volume two has 14. So you're looking at 26 episodes times three is, yeah, 80-ish bucks. It's $78. Yeah. That's Come on, the, aerospace engineer. <laughs> hey, it's, cl- it's close enough. Is that 80-ish? Uh, I did that in my head. Yeah. What's wrong with you? Uh Eighty dollars for a season is redonkulous. It's pretty recalculous. Um, now, Not gonna lie. If you purchase the season one, which it now this it's this is uh, oh man, uh, <laughs> volume oh, one. Oh man, this gets you, doesn't it? Oh, volume. Now it says. See, I don't know what. <sighs> Come on, man. Get it yeah. out. What's up? It's This is just so aggravating. Speak your mind. Speak your mind. You have a Booyaka Shot button. Use it if you have to. <laughs> uh, so it, season one, the real season one, is split yes. up into volume one, volume two. Okay? Yes. Okay. Um, right there. I'm right there with you. Keep going. Volume one, you can get all of volume one for $30. Volume uh-huh. two, you can get for all of it together for thirty dollars. So it's so still sixty. So it's still sixty dollars. Yeah. For season one, one. season. Yeah. That is yeah. still way too much. Well, your best bet is to just do what I did. You know, wait until they release all of them on DVD, and then you can buy the whole deal for fifty bucks. And you'll but get a nice little thing. I don't maybe want, you'll get a shell I don't razor with it. I want Blu-ray. I want the high def. Maybe you'll get a shell razor with it too. <laughs> oh jeez. <laughs> uh, I'm just saying, I got a party wagon with my DVDs. Where's your party wagon at? I got my party wagon. It's on the Yeah, display. but you have the actual toy. You don't have the DVD one. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> I Damn like it. mine better. I think I have since I have the cheaper, <laughs> like less you know, worthy version. I feel like I'm the better for it. Like I got the party wagon with my DVDs. You had to buy your party wagon and all the DVDs separately because you were impatient. Yeah. Well, back oh. then we didn't know that that was going to happen. Uh, I knew. <laughs> when I was uh, four, I was like, yeah, these DVDs that are going to come out in like 10 years. Yeah. We're going to want to get those. Yeah. 
So, uh, long story short, um, too late. <laughs> uh, doesn't look like there's a Blu-ray release coming out. If you want these digital, if you want these in high def, you have to get them digitally, and season one is going to cost you sixty dollars. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Um. Next uh, thing, this is still, I guess, this is kind of TV show related, but um, uh, it is Nick Turtles related. Uh, the Nick Turtles are returning to the Nickelodeon Suites Resort in Orlando, Florida. Um, it's like two like, blocks away from where you live. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. So uh, they're going to be there for the next couple months, uh, one weekend per month. Um, the October dates have already gone by. Uh, they're going to be. There. What are they? The National Guard of like comic book characters? One weekend a month, <laughs> two weeks a year. What are you doing? Oh, I like that. Um, so this is the same uh, costumes that you've seen at all of the promotional stuff um, all over the world. Thanksgiving Day Parade. Yeah. Um, so November 8th through 10th, December 13th through 15th, January 10th through 12th, February 14th through 16th, March 14th through 16th. I'm expecting a lot of pictures from you and and Alex, and, uh, and you know, April. because I don't live in Florida anymore, so I can't do that. But you definitely can. No, and uh, I do have plans to go over there and talk with uh, some people over there and Hopefully get some interviews um, and some some video for our YouTube page. So, wouldn't it be funny if you like met the guy who was in the Raphael costume and he was just like, "I hate Raphael." <laughs> Shut up! I hate him. No, 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 no. It's not. It's not <laughs> like personal. It's just like, uh, oh, it's like, not personal. You play him oh, for okay. like, well, fine. The Michelangelo guy is just like, "I hate Michelangelo." <laughs> I had to play him all over the world. People call me Mikey. <laughs> My name is Rick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, there's, there's certainly a possibility that that could happen. That'd be pretty funny. <laughs> like those are the lie. kind of questions. Like, do they do the actors always portray the same turtle? Or do uh, they I would around? think so because they're all different heights. Yes, they are. So I mean, you would kind of have to. And it's like, do they actually enjoy the turtles that they portray? Yeah. Is it? Is it just a job for Raphael, or does he like Donatello the best? You right. know what I mean. Yeah. Is yeah. Uh, you know where where what kind of places have they been able to travel to? Exactly. All that stuff. How many groupies do they have? You know. <laughs> Hashtag how turtle many, groupies. How many women want to make it with a turtle? You know. These are the hard hitting questions that. Hashtag turtle asked. groupies. You got it. <laughs> can only be asked on the Turtle Power Podcast. Of course. Um, podcast after dark. <laughs> hey, Alex, uh, Leo sucks. Oh, I talked to the guy in the Alex in the in the Alex in the Leo costume, and he was like, "No, I hate Leo. Nobody likes Leo. No sane, normal <laughs> human being likes Leo." Oh, <laughs> you know, you're pissing off a lot of our listeners that like Leo too. Whatever. The only guy that likes Leo that like you know that ever said anything about liking Leo also says that I am awesome. So. I'm good. Frost Axe, you're my boy. Yeah. <laughs> Man. Um, Leo sucks. <laughs> should keep saying it because Alex isn't here. Last, last <laughs> bit of Turtles uh, television news. Um, Is that Leo sucks? I mean, Ad Alex will tell you that. In the new series, Leo sucks. <laughs> we do have... Uh, some uh, some friends of ours that are going to be at the Geek Media Expo this weekend in Nashville. Nice. And a certain uh, turtle voice actor is going to be there, a Mr. Rob Paulson. So his name is Robert Paulson. Robert Paulson. His name is Robert Paulson. <laughs> Hopefully, we can get uh, uh, some some. Uh, some words. We've got to ask him the ultimate Rob. question. The ultimate question. Who does he like better, Leo or – I mean, Raph or Donnie? <laughs> it's definitely not Leo. Well, I, <laughs> I know. Think well, no, that. nobody likes Leo. Leo sucks. <laughs> um, see, I, see oh, for man, me, it's I wish more, I would have thought about this more... Leo bashing earlier in the show. <laughs> for me, it's, it's more uh, – oh, yeah. Well, Justin Timberlake, right? Yeah. 
That's true. Yeah. yeah. Hashtag Leo sucks. Um, anyway, for no, me, we gotta ask. We gotta ask Rob that. For like, me, uh, see, for me, it's who who he thinks would win in a in a in a match in a battle. 87 Raphael or 2003 or 2013 Donatello. Oh, well, that's easy. That's so easy. Are you kidding me? Why is that easy? It's Donnie. It's 2013 Donnie. Why, why is that easy? That's not. All right. I'll give you many reasons why. Here's the thing. One, the 87 Turtles flat out just sucked at fighting. Um, uh, yeah. Okay. Two. <laughs> I'll give that to you. <laughs> two. 87 Raphael is the exact same turtle as 87 Leonardo and 87 Donatello and 87 Michelangelo. There's no difference, <laughs> but the voice actors and the colors of their headbands sometimes. And three, <laughs> I don't know if you've noticed this, who wins between 87 Raph and 2013 Raph? Who wins? Who wins? Yeah. Brian? Yeah. Does 2013 Raph beat 87 Raph? Yeah. Well, do you remember the episode where 2013 Donnie beat 2013 Wrath? No, I don't. I yeah, don't that, that happened. I remember episode But then he got one. distracted by April O'Neil and then Wrath beat him. But before then. <laughs> and I remember episode one where uh, Raph beat everybody. Yeah, but then, see, Donatello's improved since then. He has. And, and, and episode I have one. I so two, many hey, questions. Hey, episode one wow. was 2012. So that's 2012, Donnie, not 2013, Donnie. <laughs> 2013. Wait, yeah? Yeah, okay. So 2013, Donnie. Are you, are you assuming Donatello's <laughs> bow doesn't break in the middle of the <laughs> match? Because we know that happens. 87 a lot. Raph. <laughs> well, okay, true. Maybe not against 87 Raph, but uh, I have yeah, got I know. His questions. bow breaks a lot. We get it. <laughs> but you know what? Hey, you can point out the fact that his bow staff keeps breaking. Mm-hmm. What did what did Splinter say at the very end of that episode? You thwarted an alien invasion. You saved the world. You did all this awesome stuff with just a simple stick. Like, just suck it right there. Mm-hmm. The, the the supposedly like worst weapon that keeps breaking, and Donatello pulls off amazing stuff with it. That's why 2013 Donnie beats 87 Raph. Yeah, I have questions for Mr. Nielli. Okay. Like, What's why, that? Why in the, well, among many, why in the blue hell does he not have like a carbon fiber stick? It's solar it, power it, This guy it's built out. metalhead and he's still using a wooden stick. He can hey. still have a bow staff. I'm down with the bow staff. Bow staffs are awesome. But throw some tech behind it a little bit. Yeah, the solar powered staff that uh, Splinter was talking about. There you go. Hey, remember they gave him some tech, and it was in Flash Forward. And come on, that kind of sucked. that was too that. Well, that that, that was that. almost as bad as uh, you know the show that shall not be named <laughs> that we talked about in the last episode. <laughs> oh man! So hopefully next episode we might have a couple of words from Mr. Paulson. So, um, Paulson, don't uh, don't hold your breath because that's. Like another month from now. Well, if there's one thing you, me, and Robert Paulson can agree on, yeah. it's that Leo sucks. Oh, jeez. <laughs> because Alex isn't here to defend his boy. Yeah. And Leo's just awful. <laughs> He's just, thank God. You're going to get some, some, some hate tweets. He's such a tool in the in the comics now, you know, in City oh, Fall. Man. Being manipulated by Shredder the way that he is, it's like, come on, man. That wouldn't have worked well, on Donnie. Donnie's too smart to fall for that stuff. Yeah. That's a... Uh... That we will be talking about that, definitely. We will also be talking about that. Uh, <laughs> let's move on to uh, a segment which I'm now calling "Mutated Messages." I have no idea what this is. This, this is our listener feedback. <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. But it sounds cooler. <laughs> like, I have no idea what that is. <laughs> Sounds cooler as mutated messages. So might, we might change the name of that as I think of something better because I didn't know this was an actual thing that we're going to be doing. <laughs> uh, to yes, that's a total possibility. <laughs> um, so we've got a email. Uh, what for, people send emails still? We, Crazy. Well, okay, this actually isn't an email, but I'm going to look it up an email because this was a post on Facebook. What? People still use Facebook? People do still use Facebook. Uh, uh, and 
I am sorry to anybody out there who does use our Facebook page. Uh, it is in horrible. Yeah, it's in rough shape right now. And yeah, it is. And I know that. Uh, That'll change. I'll I'll, I'll yeah. see to it if I have to. <laughs> I, I will save this. I will be the only one who does all the work and saves all this. Oh man. So. Video sucks, by the way. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> We still got the old logo on there. All of our tweets aren't. None of our tweets are going up there. Uh, it's yeah. It's I don't understand game. why that keeps happening. Yeah, I don't know. Um, but uh, we'll get on it. Um, it will be fixed. So back to <laughs> the question, or the the uh, statement that we got. We got uh, our, our our good friend uh, Jacob Harmon uh, sent in. He says, uh, "Hey guys." Uh, uh, the uh, last episode is awesome as always. And Darby, I have a secret to tell you. Oh no! I am throwing frost axe. <laughs> so he, Jacob Harmon is frost axe. Yep. Uh, he says it's his old gamer tag that he used, he used for uh, iTunes many moons ago. And it's a pretty cool name. I'm really not gonna lie. I said it was well. sweet when I heard it. I'm not, I'm not going to change it just because I know his real name now. <laughs> uh, he wanted to give us an update. Uh, he's got, uh, aside from the Raph, Mikey, Donnie, Ooze, Chuckers, uh, he now has every basic figure in the new line. Uh, he scored the new Shredder, Mouser, Spider Bites, and all four turtles in training. And spider Bites? I have not seen Spider Bites in person yet. Yeah. Uh, oh, man, I don't know if I have either. Uh, and he did find the elusive fish face as well. So he's been searching for months, but he finally got it. Nice. Um, I finally acquired the Rat King. I was very happy to finally do that. I acquired the Rat yeah. King. What, who did I buy? I went on a little spree. Oh, I acquired the Rat King, Metalhead, and Leatherhead. Ah. And yeah, I have to agree with Alex, even though Leo sucks. I have to agree with Alex in the last one, where it's a rather disappointing figure in Leatherhead. Yeah, the dinosaur. Yeah, pretty much. It's exactly what you guys said it was, but you know what? I don't, you know, I was kind of like, whatever. I just want the Leatherhead figure. I want to be able to say I have it. Um, you know, you know what it is. So yeah, it makes I know sense. what it is. So that's fine. But like Leatherhead, whatever. But if like Metalhead and Rat King, over, awesome. I was so happy to finally get those two. Yeah. Like if you have if you have somebody come over to your place and you show them your collection, and they're like, uh, "Who's the dinosaur guy?" Right. And you're like, oh, that's Leatherhead. And they're, they're like, no, that's not Leatherhead. <laughs> and then you're like, yeah. Dude, yeah, I have a podcast. Don't argue with me over there. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, he also says uh, the price on the giant sewer playset is $80 at Walmart and Target right now. But Did uh, he actually get it? He didn't get it, did he? Us is probably more expensive. Uh, he does have the pizza box set. Um, well, that's cool because we were talking about actually wanting to get that. Right. Because and he does say it makes a killer display piece, uh, right. very well constructed out of hard plastic. The graphics are really well done, and the figures fit extremely well on it. Right. So uh, that's good to hear. Because uh, yeah, it, it does look good. I actually have not been able to find that one lately. So I haven't uh, found it at all. Yeah. So maybe that one's uh, running low right now, but hopefully it'll come around again. Um, we got a couple of really cool photos from a listener, uh, Umberto Montoya. Uh, Umberto Montoya. I, that's a great name. That is a, that is a fantastic name. Uh, he sent in some pictures. Uh, they're on the Facebook page as well. Again, sorry. He needs his own private ring announcer. <laughs> uh, he uh, put uh, – he's got uh, some some photos of – his uh, his little girl, uh, his his daughter, um, is showing off some of their new acquisitions. Uh, first one, the original turtle blimp. How awesome is that? What? No. Yeah, it looks great. It looks really good. Um, and then the second photo is uh, he wrote TMT then and now. A very happy little collector, uh, and. You kidding me with that turtle blimp? <laughs> like, the no, awesome. no, I'm looking at it. I'm yeah. looking at this right now, and it, 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 it's I'm... a newest acquisition, which means they just got it. Yeah, yeah. Like, where? Yeah, it looks great. I guess they're on eBay, or maybe, uh, maybe they found it somewhere, like at a. Oh God! 
Yeah. That's, no, uh, it looks looks great. They got all the bombs uh, on there. The bombs just like on the, uh, the turtle van. If I had to nitpick at all, my only problem would be that the glider isn't gray, but but that's not their fault. But that's no. crazy. Yeah, it looks really good. By the way, if you ever go back and watch the 87 series, you realize just how useless the turtle blimp really is. <laughs> and how they ever get it to fly anywhere is ridiculous. You know, you, you, okay, you ready? You ready for another Ryan's going to nitpick something on the Nick Turtle series? Go for it. Uh in, Is it that Leo sucks? Because he kind of does. In, no. In uh, the mutation, um, what's what's episode one called again? The, Which one? Uh, the mutation situation. Sure. When they are on the rocket sled and it goes up into the air. Yeah. And then they, they jump then out. They just and, jump out like it's and, nothing. Yeah. No, that's yeah. fine. They just start gliding. I've come to accept that... Their desk fans can glide them through the air. I'm fine with that. You know what my problem was? What in the blue hell happened to the giant rocket sled that is now falling from the sky? And well, clearly to... it crashed to Earth and killed hundreds of people. Exactly. It's filled with rocket fuel. There's, you know, like there is going to be some serious lawsuits coming. Well, of course, but you know what? <laughs> when that thing lands. What are the turtles own that you could possibly sue them for? Their video games? Their many TVs? <laughs> you really want that? I There's mean... just, I mean, okay, even like, take out the lawsuits. There's some serious damage slash injuring of people slash perhaps killing or maiming people. Right. When that thing well... lands and explodes. And kills hundreds of people. Now, the desk fans, I, I'm totally on board with because clearly Donatello has the ability to take desk fans and make them powerful enough to propel them through the air. Okay. Because, let's face it, you've been okay with that. pretty freaking awesome. Okay. But are you on board with me on this? Oh, well, yeah. That's what I thought, too. I was okay. like, what well, just – Okay. So it's not me just being crazy for one. Like clearly it just crashed to earth and killed. And this is the thing too. It's like if you ever watched the 2013 series, uh, my roommate and I were pointing this out. There is nobody in the streets of New York City. Yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. Oh. I didn't realize New York City was such a desolate city. Did you know <sighs> yeah. this? We – when when Jessica and I were, were re-watching season one, that was brought up several times. Like we've been to New York City, it's never like this. No. <laughs> not not even in the middle of the night. Exactly. Um, yeah. So. I've been. I, I remember I had like a four a.m. flight out of New York City, so I was there, and it was just like, yeah, no, there there are still people on the streets. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, these, Earth, these photos are awesome. The second one has got. Uh, They've got the uh, the the aforementioned uh, uh, pizza box playset there uh, with right. the the Nick Turtles. Uh, they've got Splinter. They got the, all the training turtles. I'm still just like, are you kidding me with the turtle blimp? <laughs> it looks amazing. They've got the uh, they've got Leatherhead and Metalhead. They got the Shell Razor two two party wagons, the DVD party wagon and the actual party wagon. Yep. yep. They've got the the original turtles. Next to the Shredder with the blue helmet and the purple face mask. Yep. They got Super Shredder yeah. next to them with uh, Toko got the, and Razar. They got the, yeah, Bebop they got the uh, Super Shredder, yeah. Yep. They've got the miniature. Uh, they even have the body. Triceraton. Yeah. Yep. Triceraton, the Turtles, uh, April and Splinter. It looks like they got a couple of Splinters, a couple of uh, uh, Yeah, they've got like Splinter with his bow and Splinter with a trash can. Uh, he's uh, That Splinter is in... The uh, the I think it was called the sewer cycle. It was the motorcycle that had the little um, sidecar that was made out of trash can. As awesome as this is, like, where's the twenty third? Where's the two thousand three stuff, man? Hey, that you know, that's there's room to grow. There's room. There to is. Grow here. There definitely is. Um, but yeah, this this looks great though. Uh, it's it's really cool that you're able, you know. Put it all on one big table and, and take one big picture of it. What is that great. outfit behind the turtle blimp? They clearly have a costume of some yeah, kind. Yeah, I was trying to think of that too. I was, Umberto, I was Umberto, that. please. So let us know what this costume is that is being made behind the turtle blimp in your picture. Yeah, I was trying to figure it out. 
It's, it's almost Green Ranger-esque, if you will. Mm. Mm. Interesting. Almost. So anyway. So anyway. Oh, my God. He's got the little ones with the pizza box play set. Yep. Yep. Little training turtles there. <laughs> um, oh, God. We've uh, – I'm going to call them uh, – we've got some shelled shout-outs. Uh, from uh, Gary Rickleman and uh, Josh Denton. Uh, really? Yeah. Yep. That's what shell, we call them. Shell shot. We're, we're gonna shell, go with that. Shell, okay. Shout outs. Yep. <laughs> yep. Okay. And where are these at? Uh, they're just just tweets that we've gotten from uh, or, or emails or Facebook messages that we've got. I, you know, I want to let everybody know we read everything. You know, yeah, if we, we kind of do. To you, you know, in time, you know, it's like as we mentioned, we're we're all really busy, but um, uh, yeah, we we appreciate all the feedback that we get and uh, uh, try to keep track of everybody so we can at least mention them on the show. Uh, and just to say that we appreciate you. We appreciate you listening and, uh, we definitely want to, uh, continue to have you as part of the show. So, um, if you guys just want to bombard Alex for not showing up on this episode too, and just tell him how much Leo sucks, that would be great as well. Um, you don't have to do the last part, but yeah, no, that definitely, I totally agree though. Uh, tweet at Alex, uh, that's a, Rodriguez, two thousand five. Yes. Uh, send him a tweet. Just say we that you missed him. Um, and uh, we do have one last uh, thing. We we um, it was actually uh, uh, TMNT Master, the the official uh, Turtles Twitter feed that put up a uh, a photo um, of uh, Muckman and Joe Eyeball. And uh, yes. And uh, I I said uh, uh, potential future. Uh, characters on the show, perhaps, maybe. So this is another one. It's just like um, uh, Wingnut and Screwloose. You know, Muckman and Joe Eyeball can't. And in my mind, can't have one without the other. But uh, well, apparently, they have a Wingnut without a Screwloose so far. So we'll yeah. see. Well, um, Sween Halleck, uh, he responded, "Kings of TMNT figures, hands down." So maybe, maybe we will see them. Um, the, uh, did you see uh, uh, really quick going back to uh, New York City uh, Comic Con? Um, they were doing a giveaway of like hundreds of figures. Um, no, I must have missed that. Otherwise, I probably would have gone. You had to tweet out the hashtag for. Um, like, if you wanted to be eligible, you had to tweet for for a single um character or for a single uh figure you had to tweet out the hashtag that was associated with that one so right. if you wanted a shot at all 300 whatever figures you had to tweet 300 some odd times i would have done it had i known about it uh i did uh, I have not heard back that <laughs> I've <haven't> won <laughs> anything. So I guess they just they just put out a thing just the other day saying that um, you know look look to your direct messages if uh, that they were going to be starting to notify people uh, people that won. So it's open. Well, if uh, any of our listeners happen to win, uh, let us know. Let us know which uh, which character you won. Dibs on Muckman and Joe Eyeball. <laughs> Well, because Alex isn't here, we're not going to do a character spotlight. I'll go because Leo sucks. Yeah, yeah. I guess uh, I guess we will skip on the uh, the character spotlight. And as a reminder uh, to our listeners, if you have a character spotlight that you would like to share, please, by all means, uh, you know, you can write one up. Just don't take any good ones, you know, because God, (laughs) no, take the good ones. I really want to do the good ones. I, no, I mean, man, we had we had Zach the Fifth Turtle done, and I was like, oh god, it was such a good one. You just totally ended me wanting to do. You know, I want maybe that would have been a good one for me or Alex, even though Alex isn't here because Leo sucks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he does. Uh, we, we did. <laughs> yeah. So if you if you want to record uh, something yourself, or if you just want to write it up, whatever you feel comfortable with, if you want to record yourself. Uh, put it on YouTube and send us a link to it. Um, we'll import it from there. Uh, e- 
either way, anyway, uh, whatever you want to do, um, if you if you want to share your character spotlight, please. We, we'd love to have it on the show. Yep. Uh, um, so that's gonna that's gonna do it for episode twenty. Um, wasn't big two O? Yeah, the big two O. It wasn't a, a super special episode by any means. Um, maybe for episode twenty five, we'll do something special. But uh, uh, hey, hey, I thought we did something special by not having Alex here. Uh, I mean, he's <laughs> no. always kind of bringing us down and not really adding much to the show. No, so stop. maybe. Uh... <laughs> No, we <laughs> we miss you, Alex. We do, we do. Even though Leo sucks, we still miss you. <laughs> Don't miss you, buddy. Uh, we 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 do have a, a new uh, guest with us here. Uh, uh, hi, do you want do you want to say something? Really, really. So yeah, that, no, that, was that is. My dog has been barking in the background this entire time, and you bring your freaking cat on the show. <laughs> you just want to say hi. <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely allergic to cats, so yeah, I'm probably going to die now. Thanks. Oh, it's okay. Mm. Audio, the audio, an uh, audio cat won't hurt you. <laughs> yeah, no. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you once again for listening to the Turtle Power Podcast. Uh, check us out on our official website, TurtlePowerPodcast.com. You can follow us on Twitter at TMNT Podcast. You can follow myself at Fig Don Pat. You can follow Darby at Lobo DTP. And uh, yes, please uh, tweet at Alex. Tell him you miss him. At yeah, tell me you miss him. And for my education directors and the people at the Colorado Media School, I swear to God, the, the podcast is usually better than this. <laughs> yeah, this is, uh, this is now for credit. So. Yes, this is now part of my hours. So, <laughs> yay! <laughs> uh, Alex is once again a uh, excuse me at a Rodriguez two thousand five. Um, you can like us on Facebook; it's still there. We will. We'll, I, I we're we're going to we'll, revamp it. I swear to God, we're actually yes, going to do something with we, that. We will. Uh, Facebook dot com slash Turtle Power Podcast. Um, you can uh, share your feedback with us uh, via old-fashioned email, turtlepowerpodcast at gmail.com. If you uh, have the time, uh, you can uh, rate us on iTunes, leave us a, a review. Well, last episode, we, we talked about a whole bunch. Uh, the uh, And we found out Alex doesn't take kindly to constructive criticism. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's... Uh, <laughs> he really doesn't, does he? <laughs> um, well, at least when it comes to the show. <laughs> you can't put yourself out there for the world to hear and not expect a few people to not like you. Yeah, that's true. You put yourself on the internet and, uh, you know, not everybody's going to love you. It, it actually took a while for me to get used to that, too. Really? Uh, I'm used to people not liking me. <laughs> I have nothing to <laughs> I have nothing with the respect. That's right. Oh man. Um yeah, we uh, I don't think we have had any since our last episode. So, um uh for any of you out there, um if you want to go in there, um we've got a link in the show notes. Song of the show. Song of the show. Finally, I actually have one. Uh I was actually listening to Spotify Radio of few weeks ago and i had to make a mental note about this and a uh, red flag by billy talent actually came up on my spotify radio and the picture that came up with it was the tmnt soundtrack picture so i was like wow i actually do like this song and it's on the tmnt soundtrack so definitely need to make that the sound of the show song That's of the show to me red uh, flag by billy talent we are going to we're going to use this entire soundtrack because it's great. So, it's that great of a soundtrack. Yeah, it is. Um, so, yeah, now, now is as good a time as any other. So, Red flag, Billy Talent. Do it. Ladies Bossa and gentlemen. Nova. Children. Adults. Bossa Nova. <laughs> dogs and cats. Thank you for listening. Thank you. And we'll talk to you next time. Bossa Nova.